Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Know Your Charity. This is a show that we are profiling every Ramadan. And in this Ramadan, again, as we do always, we are looking at NGOs that are making an impact across the communities. Now, one NGO that is quite well known across South Africa is OCAF South Africa. And joining me is its founding member, Zainul Abedin Kaji. Uncle Zainul, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Jazakallah so much for joining us. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Faraz. And uh, thank you really uh, for this opportunity. Now the pleasure is ours. Uncle Zainul, uh, Wakafs, uh, it, it started uh, during the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the importance of a community sovereign wealth fund. Let's talk about it. How important is it with regards to Islam and the practice of it? Okay, so you mentioned that it started during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And exactly, I think when you look at uh, his vision, hmm. uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he actually, uh, w when, when that verse was revealed, Lantana lul birra hatta tunfiku mimma tuhibun, and when people came up to him and asked him, what should we do? This hmm. is really one of those amazing verses which, which implores people to give of what they love. Mm. Uh, some of the Sahaba came to him and said, look, I've got this property, I've got this agricultural farm, I've got this date farm, uh, what do you, and th th these are like my best uh, assets that I have, mm. uh, what do you advise me to do? And the Prophet Sallallahu advised like Umar ibn al-Khattab, uh, make this orchard of yours in Khaybar as a waqaf. Mm as a sadaqa jariya. Retain the property, but use the fruits for, the, for dawah, for the Muslims, for the general usage, for your family, for the administration, uh, uh, for the wayfarers, etc., etc. So that really became one of the founding uh, uh, wakafs in, in history, in Islamic history. And from there, lots of other sahaba uh, who had assets made wakafs. So, uh, uh, and, and particularly in Medina, because that's where uh, a lot of the rules and regulations about society and community living and uh, so forth came into being. A lot of rules and regulations uh, about Islamic civilization that was, were, that was to come uh, were, were actually planted there. So, in terms of its importance, I think one can see that over the years, uh, over the centuries, uh, the whole wakaf system grew like wildfire sure. uh, all over the world, in Indonesia, India, uh, in Algeria, Tunisia, uh, in Egypt. You know, some of the most famous universities, Al-Azhar University mm -hmm. is a wakaf, sure. uh, the Karawin University, Mosque University, the first mosque university in the world was in Fez, donated by a woman, mm -hmm. Fatima Fihri. So, um, you know, and this actually helped grow the Muslim Ummah in education, in research, uh, in developing the scholars, the ulama, and gave uh, independence to uh, the, the Muslim Ummah as well, because now uh, the, the whole issue of sustainability, self-sufficiency, self-reliance came into play, because now uh, as a community and as an Ummah, as civil society, mm -hmm. Uh, really speaking, uh, because these were not government controlled. These were all civil society. People on the ground were able to make wakafs. And of course, this grew into the Ottoman Empire. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we have a bit of a sad patch in our history that some of these wakafs were nationalized and they were confiscated mm. and, you know, due to colonialism and other, other factors. And uh, but now I think uh, there, there's been a, a drive for revival of this work of system. It's a very important charity in Islam. Both zakah and okaf or wakaf are very important uh, charities in Islam, and and this has pr been proven over and over and over through through our history. So uh, what we need to do now is to revive the system. Mm -hmm. We need to put more funds into the system. We need to give away some of our best assets into the system. W ultimately, it's for the benefit of the Ummah. 
And the beauty part of it is like particularly for South Africa is that we could use the income generated from these wakafs for uh, the broader public, for the broader South African public, for the poor, for the needy, into education, into scholars, into scholarships, and many other uses, you know, healthcare is one of those areas as well. But anyway, maybe I'm talking gee, too much. Gee, no, 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 it's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's giving an idea of what workers can be used, especially in a democratic South Africa. Uh, it's the early 2000s. OCAF comes and establishes itself as a work of here in South Africa. Talk to us as a founding member why it was necessary for OCAF to establish a work of in, a, in our country. Well, I think, first of all, uh, when we look at our institutions mm. in this country, uh, we, we need to also look at what was it that the Prophet Wasallam did as a sunnah, mm. as, a, as, a, as a practical example of uh, an institution that is going to develop in an economy, mm. and in, in an Islamic economy, and where there's hundreds of verses from the Quran that, that implore us uh, to give out of what we love, uh, you know, several verses, alladina uh, yunfikuna fissarai waddarai, spend in in times of prosperity and in in times of adversity, mm. give in the way of Allah, you know. So there's uh, literally hundreds of verses that that talk to us about giving, whether it's uh, about sadaka or zakah or uh, general spending. So w w when, when we look at that, uh, we see that from a prophetic example, uh, yes, uh, look at our situation in this country. Do we have this institution or don't we have mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we found that there were some family wakafs. There, there have been. There, there's been the family wakaf in uh, uh, the Mias farm, mm -hmm. the waterfall yes, estate, yes. Uh, very well known. Uh, then there have been other wakafs like... Uh, the Grey Street Mosque with shops and flats, mm. uh, you know, in Durban. Then the, in Cape Town, the, the Shah Muhammad mm. uh, Trust as well, created to, to fund Islamic studies. Um, so, uh, you know, there were other institutions that created workups like the Nurul Islam Mosque in Danasia, yes. the Rustenburg Mosque Plaza. So these were uh, generally dedicated to their basic local communities. But I think we needed something that was much more broad-based as well. Mm -hmm. And hence we founded OCAF South Africa, the National OCAF Foundation of South Africa. So, uh, you know, a lot of work, preparatory work went into it. A lot of research work went into it. Obviously, we had a bit of background into the whole work mm -hmm. of system from training that was provided to us by the Islamic Development Bank way back yes. in 1984. So. Uh, you know, there were four of us that actually attended training there, and that's where we learned for the first time about the, the whole work of system. So I think the seed was already planted mm -hmm. uh, way back, but it had to, uh, perhaps uh, it needed its time to sort of germinate and, 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 and grow. So um, I think from that perspective, the perspective that we needed to be um, mobilizing capital uh, and create a, a capital fund for the Muslim Ummah. Uh, and and uh, yes, we have, for example, our achievement up to date has been like about a hundred million rand, which, which really uh, is nothing if we compare to what we really need. Because one could actually go, uh, and we hope that our next target may be one billion, Inshallah. and over, over the next few years, it may be five, ten years also, you know. Had we started when Muslims first came to South Africa mm. in the 1600s, uh, I think we would have really had a massive, massive uh, fund. I mean, there are lots of examples of uh, communities like, uh, for example, the Aga Khan community mm. in East Africa. They have massive uh, okaf. Mm. Um, they have universities, they have hospitals, mm. uh, and you know, many, many other institutions that serve the general public. We too, here in South Africa, need to serve uh, in the interests of the Muslim Ummah, the broader South African community as well. So, uh, apart from the religious and spiritual benefits mm. that we get out of it, because we get a lot of thawab, and it's, it's really our Akhira investment fund, because we, what, what we 
uh, there's a saying which says that what you give uh, will always be yours. What you keep will never be yours. Yes. So uh, as a bit of a, 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 a sort of maybe philosophical, but yes. it's, it's from the Quran actually, mm. that what, whatever you give endures with Allah. Allah. Exactly. You know, he, he, he records whatever you're giving away and he will reward you for that 700 fold. Alhamdulillah. You know, but whatever you keep will never be yours. Mm. So, uh, you know, people need to make the choice. <laughs> it's up to, uh, you know, the community out there to actually look at this as, as, a, uh, as, as one of the greatest opportunities to actually give feasibility, voluntary, mm. because wakaf is a voluntary donation. It's not compulsory, but it's a strong sunnah. Mm. It's a strong uh, sunnah of the Sahaba as well. Uh, so we have lots of um, uh, precedents about this. You know, the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had made wakafs as mm. well. We know that when he passed away, he left nothing. Mm. Uh, you know, there's no inheritance that comes from prophets. But during his lifetime, he acquired assets that were donated to him. For example, Rabbi Mukhairik donated something like about five or six farms to him through his will. And the Prophet ﷺ redistributed that as, as wakafs, and that supported his family going down the generations. Because we're going to have to stop you there and go for a break. And after that, we'll continue our conversation with Zainal Abedin Kaji from Okaf, South Africa, and the good work that this organization has done for the last two decades. Do stay tuned. Come back to Know Your Charity. We are in discussion with Zainal Abedin Kaji from Okaf, South Africa. Uncle Zainal, South Africa has many challenges from political to social. It's there. But if there's one thing both you and I as South Africans can be proud of is that religious freedom is there for us. And the ability to have a wakaf as an expression of that freedom. It's beautiful, is it not, that you can use a wakaf to even empower many people in South Africa to allow them to have the, the constitutional rights that is in our Bill of Rights. Absolutely, uh, Brother Faraz. I think that, uh, you know, we, we are so fortunate mm. and, you know, it goes back to all the uh, struggles mm. that uh, even the Muslim community yes. uh, and members of the Muslim community had actually waged in the, in, in the struggle against uh, apartheid. Mm. And I think as, as one of the prizes of that freedom is the religious freedom that we have in this mm. country. And with that is our ability to actually develop uh, the, the work of system mm. in this country. Uh, I think we were probably the first Muslim minority and democratic country that uh, initiated this mm. community-based work of system. So uh, with our initiative, many other countries have also uh, institutionalized the work of system. So we, we hope that, uh, you know, uh, going forward, uh, we will be able to grow this fund and, and develop it further, and particularly for the benefit of, uh, of Muslims and uh, our neighbors and our fellow South Africans. Uh, what we do see is that uh, Muslims have been in the forefront uh, with lots of charities, mm -hmm. but we also need to target uh, specific areas as well. So some of us are into relief work, some of us are in um, you know, other kinds of developmental work. But I think that uh, what we also need to look at is how can we become an influential community? How can we benefit others? How can we uh, spread our wings mm. and, and, uh, and show the, the beneficence of Islam to the broader public here in South Africa? So through the work of system, we are able to do that very, very comfortably because uh, the work of system is so flexible and, and, and so all embracing that we could literally do many other projects. For example, uh, one, of, one of the things that, um, or rather many of the things that we do mm. is, uh, is, is provide services to uh, the broader community. Mm. So uh, w when we say broader community, we're talking about all South Africans. Mm. 
particularly those that are in, in poorer areas, disadvantaged. So we've done a lot of boreholes in schools, uh, in poor communities, educational programs, especially we see uh, mathematics as one of the major problems in this country. We've done lots of mathematics uh, programs to, uh, to, to uh, sort of get better grades for students uh, and enhance their mathematical abilities, especially matriculants. Uh, the cataract operation program has been quite a successful program. Since 2005, we've been working with the Islamic Medical Association and the uh, Islamic Circle of Southern Africa uh, that, that, and the Pakistani community as well, that, uh, you know, we've been supporting those kind of projects. We've brought in uh, uh, academics as well. In, For example, the uh, International Congress on Islamic Civilization, we've had three so far, one in Johannesburg, Durban, Cape Town. Um, and, and this has also brought lots of academics and Islamic scholars together to talk about Islamic contribution in this region, in the Southern African region. Uh, so there's different levels of work that has to be done. We can't all be in relief work and yes. that type of work. So there's lots of other community needs. Uh, we need to develop more students going into higher levels of education, mm. into masters, into PhDs, and maybe even looking at uh, perhaps different types of uh, uh, careers that people need to go into, you know, uh, mining, metallurgy, uh, geology, uh, you know, earth sciences, uh, marine sciences, you know, there's so many other things one can actually do than the traditional sort of accounting and law and, you know, uh, so, yeah, alhamdulillah, I think that uh, for South Africa, uh, we're very fortunate and we need to uh, we, we, we need to continue that struggle as well and, and we need to continue contributing to the growth of this country. Alhamdulillah. Uncle Zainul, uh, investment in a workoff and especially an organization like OCAF, for our viewers, if they would like to invest into a workoff, what would they need to do and what are some of the investments they can get involved in? Okay, so I think one needs to understand that the workoff once you give it, mm. once you donate it, it's mm. gone. Yes. It belongs to Allah. Yes. That is the essence of a waqaf. Mm. So you are parting with your asset or mm. with your money or whatever uh, for the benefit of some Sharia compliant purpose. Yes. Okay, so which could be anything. Uh, there could be people who could donate for animal care. Mm. And there are people that do that. We, we have a project where we uh, we, we're feeding cats, mm. for example, and looking after uh, giving medication to cats and all of that. So uh, the, the, the wakaf can be uh, in the form of cash, it can be in the form of property, it can be in the form of um, a monthly donation, it can be in the form of a lump sum donation, it can be part of your will, okay, very important mm. because the, there is a facility in in Islamic worlds that allows us to, to part with at least one third mm. uh, or a maximum of one third rather uh, of, of our assets as, as a waqaf as well. Uh, and and, and uh, if one also has inherited from our parents mm. and so forth, let's give some of that as a waqaf as well. You know, these are just some of the ideas that we, we've, you can also give some of your time as a yes. waqaf. Okay, so if you've got your skills, your energy, your, that you would love to give, give that also. Uh, what happens is uh, the model that we have is that all these funds that, that come in through different channels uh, by donors uh, are invested in mainly real estate into property. And the income that gets generated from those properties gets used for all the kinds of projects that we do. So uh, it's a very simple pr process. Uh, we have a general sort of understanding of how the waqaf system works. Uh, there's a standard terms and conditions. Generally, uh, anybody can make a waqaf, male, female. Anybody can be, become a trustee of a waqaf as well, male or female. In fact, Hazrat Umar, uh, radiallahu an, his uh, waqaf, uh, his daughter was his mutawalliya or 
trustee. So, um, and in, in terms of investment, uh, OCAF South Africa takes the responsibility of investing, of looking after the investment, of ensuring that there's uh, sufficient income, uh, that the investment is protected, because the work of funds are sacred funds. We treat that as sacred funds because uh, we're not allowed to use the work of funds for any consumption purposes. So it can't be spent. It has to remain in the, in, a, in the capital fund all the time. That's why we also refer to it as our community sovereign fund. So uh, if, if, we, if we keep, uh, for example, typically if you donate a thousand rands, mm. uh, we're not allowed to spend a thousand rands. We're allowed to invest a thousand rands and the income that gets generated out of the thousand rands can be used for spending purposes on whatever feeding animals or education purposes or healthcare purposes or planting trees. Mm. Some people love to do that. So, uh, you know, it, it really depends on uh, your personal passion about what you would like to do, provided, of course, it's Sharia compliant. Definitely. So, yeah. Uncle Zainul, one final question, and I wish we had more time to speak about the work done by OCAF South Africa and WCAFs in general. Uh, you mentioned 100 million rand, alhamdulillah, has been made so far. The target is, inshallah, 1 billion rand. What are some of the other, product, other projects MAF OCAF SA is looking at as we continue to evolve in a modern world? Yeah, I think... Um uh, first of all, we've got to build up our investment mm. portfolio. We should be looking at more uh, buildings and more uh, entrepreneurs mm. in the community. Uh, we, should be up, we should be looking at uh, more uh, spend on dawah mm. in this country, on education in this country, uh, uplifting the poor in different ways, especially education and, and, and self-skilling mm. as well. Uh, programs that will uh, uh, look at communities in the rural areas uh, where we have masajid mm. and so forth they need a lot of upgrading and i think that's one of the projects that we'll be looking at uh, in the coming year that uh, uh, projects that that have gone into disrepair and so forth mm. that we try to resuscitate them and we try to uh, upgrade them uh, there are new mosques that are being built in in townships uh, that require additional kind of work that you, we kind of used to in, in the suburbs. For example, they need more security, they need more uh, caretaking, etc. So um, I think when, as, we, as we go forward, uh, we have Hajj funds, for example. Yeah. We'll be supporting the Hujaj. Some of them will be going uh, in the current year Inshallah. as well. So, uh, you know, I think we could carry on mm, and, uh, talking about youth development, mm. uh, the issues about a social cohesion between all the different uh, uh, Muslim communities in South Africa. Uh, you know, we always try to forge a kind of unity and, and building up relationships with the Ethiopian community, the Somali community, the Arab community, uh, you know, local mm -hmm. South African indigenous communities, etc. So, inshallah, I think it's up to communities out there to support Oka South Africa, uh, give us your uh, your, your trust. We've been trusted since 2001 mm. and inshallah uh, we, we, we undertake to, uh, uh, to, to fulfill that trust in the best possible way. Uh, you know, uh, without, without this kind of uh, uh, governance that we have within the organization and the trust that you place in, in OCAF South Africa, I think we could as, a, as an ummah grow and develop and build a solid uh, community sovereign fund that will uh, that will be of benefit to the ummah in various ways apart from uh, your personal benefit your sp uh, spiritual growth and your and your closeness that you get uh, the kurba that you get to allah the nearness that you get to allah uh, out of giving out of love for him inshallah uh, may allah bless you and uh, you know uh, reward you abundantly mountains of gold for your uh, donations whatever the donation is whatever the work of is it doesn't matter small or big mm. inshallah i mean uncle zeno we like to say jazakallah so much for visiting us for joining us here on know your Char charity may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to grant you strength 
good um, health and the ability to continue the fantastic work that you've been doing since 2001. I mean, okay, that's Uncle Zainul Abedin Kaji from Okaf SA talking to us about the work of uh, fund and just the good work that the organization has been doing since 2001. And may we see 22 more years, even more of the good work that this organization has been doing. That's all we have for you here on Know Your Charity. Do stay tuned to Hilal TV for more Ramadan content from myself, Ras Patel, and the rest of the team. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.